The Catholic dogma of the Immaculate Conception refers to the Virgin Mary having been conceived free from all stain of original sin. Among a plethora of strong scriptural and traditional apologetics pointing to this truth, this presentation will focus on the witness of the cherubim angels to the Immaculate Conception. Let's begin with the study of typology, which discerns in God's works of the Old Covenant prefigurations of what he accomplished in the person of his incarnate Son. A characteristic about typology is that the New Testament type is always the fulfilled, more glorious version of its Old Testament prefiguration. Jesus himself provides a clear example of typology in John 6 when he says, Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that a man may eat of it and not die. The manna in the Old Testament could only sustain physical life for a time. Jesus, the bread of life, the New Testament type of the manna, sustains eternal spiritual life and is thus the superior type. With the superiority of New Testament types in mind, let us turn to Mary, the new Ark of the Covenant. The Ark contained manna, Aaron the priest's rod, and God's word in the Ten Commandments. Mary contained the new manna, Jesus the bread of life, who is also the true high priest, and the word made flesh. Scripture presents multiple linguistic parallels between the Ark of the Covenant and the Virgin Mary. For example, in 2 Samuel, David exclaimed, How can the Ark of the Lord come to me? This parallels the words of Elizabeth in Luke 1, when she exclaimed, Why is this granted me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Again, 2 Samuel states, And the Ark of the Lord remained in the house three months, which is echoed in Luke, and Mary remained with her about three months. These kinds of parallels between Mary and the Ark are numerous in Scripture. Now remember, when God commanded Moses to build the Ark, he charged Moses to include figures of two cherubim angels. And you shall make two cherubim of gold, of hammered work shall you make them, on the two ends of the mercy seat. There I will meet with you, from between the two cherubim that are upon the Ark of the Testimony. Notice how the cherubim flank the dwelling place of God. God arranges to meet with his people from between the two cherubim on the ark. Scripture tells us that the high priest could not even approach the ark unless he first be purified from sin. Keep that in mind a moment. Another type of Mary is the Garden of Eden, another dwelling place of God. St. Theodotus of Ancyra writes, O virgin who surpasses Eden's garden of delights. St. Ephraim similarly says, God's Eden is Mary. In her there is no serpent that harms, no Eve that kills, but from her springs the tree of life that restores the exiles of Eden. Inefabilis Deus makes reference to Mary as the type of that garden enclosed on all sides, which cannot be violated or corrupted by any deceitful plots. The encyclical refers here to Song of Songs 4, which speaks of a bride who is a garden enclosed as well as other references to this bride as a garden throughout the chapter. Now remember, Mary, whom God chose as his dwelling place, is the superior type of her Old Testament prefigurements. Draw your attention to the Genesis 3 account of the fall. Adam and Eve disobeyed God by eating the forbidden fruit. They are then exiled from the garden. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden. He drove out the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Notice once again, a cherubim angel is stationed as a guardian of the dwelling place of God. Even the east gate at which the cherubim is stationed matches the entrance to the ark, which was accessed by the east gate of the temple. And more importantly, notice how when Adam and Eve exhibited sin, they were immediately vanquished from the garden. With that in mind, return to Mary as the ark, the ark which was flanked by cherubim, and then return to the other dwelling place of God which is the garden, also guarded by a cherubim. Both dwelling places of God are guarded from the presence of sin. The priest had to purify himself from sin before approaching the ark. Adam and Eve were exiled from the garden as soon as they sinned. Therefore we see the powerful witness of the cherubim, that Mary, as the new ark, as the new garden, must be without any stain of sin, including Adam's original sin. For it is through Mary that God comes to meet his people, 
Mary, as the New Testament type of these Old Testament dwelling places of God, must therefore be protected from sin in an even more glorious way. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Catholic Voyager.